tonight. My next guest will be appearing at Headliners in Bethesda, Maryland on November 17th and 18th. Please welcome back to our show, very funny guy, Matt Graham. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, my name is Matt, and I cried because I had no shoes. But then I met a man who had no legs. And he said, hey, you got any old shoes laying around out there? Maybe we could work something out. I wish I were a better guy, not so selfish. But you know, nice guys finish last, it seemed like. Uh, I uh, was reading the other day about stigmata. I don't know if you ever heard of this. But it's a phenomenon where people who lead the most saintly lives possible, after a time, they will develop the bloody wounds of the Messiah in the palms of their hands. I had these once, but just for a couple of weeks, and then I realized that Heineken's weren't twist off. Uh, <laughs> but I know I'll be forgiven for my transgressions because uh, my ancestry's Irish, so I come from a dysfunctional country. Wow, thanks for stepping on that joke for me there by applauding a place, but uh, that's great. The Irish, I don't want to, drinking has killed their productivity. They've never even been able to uh, come up with their own salad dressing, which is profound underachievement for European people. A lot of great writing done by the Irish, though, but so much of it is on bar napkins and lost forever, sadly. <laughs> I think that's why Joyce is so choppy to read. At one point, Finnegan's Wake was just a big wad of Kleenex he had to pull out of his pocket and piece together. <laughs> Ireland not noted for its turnout of legendary lovers either, you know. When you think of the European countries that make all the great lovers like Italy and Spain, they've got these wonderful sexy dances like the tango, the lambada, the bossa nova. The Irish have the jig. <laughs> I tried to look for some kind of sexual content in the jig and what I found frightened me. <laughs> this dance is an epileptic frenzy that says, I am going to climax immediately. <laughs> So we can get back to the bar. I'm, I'm no great lover myself, you know. I try when I can. I try that old trick where you think about baseball to ward off orgasm, but I like baseball more than I like my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, defeated the whole purpose, actually. You guys are nice, and just because you're as nice as you are, I'm going to do a little performance treat for you. I'm Matt Graham. I'm going to perform Cat Things. This is Cat Things. in a cat's mind, and you've got to figure the animal brain sounds something like the emergency broadcast signal test pattern. So where's a little glitch that triggers sudden random violence against objects without souls? <laughs> I'll never understand my cat at all. When will my feline achieve object permanence to the point where he'll understand that my foot under the blanket is still only my foot under the blanket and not the mystery rodent that he seems to project upon it? <laughs> Uh, been through some tough times lately, kind of a family tragedy. Uh, my uh, grandfather died a couple weeks back, and uh, he died on the golf course, which seemed appropriate because he loved golf more than anything. Uh, it was his passion, although he was terrible, the worst hacker you've ever seen. And it ended up being kind of a moral victory because he died of a stroke, and it was the first time he'd ever been able to keep his left arm rigid on the backswing. <laughs> so that's an uptick, you know, hey. <laughs> I myself had a big spiritual turn to deal with my obsession with death. I came to believe in reincarnation, although I've always thought recycling was a really good idea. <laughs> now when I die, I'm leaving everything I own to me. And I was telling my grandma about reincarnation. And uh, she's a very Catholic woman raised in the South, didn't like the idea. Starts going, well, that's crazy. A bunch of lives, series of lives, you can't live more than once. Anybody thinks you can live more than once is nuts. When Jesus comes back, he'll show them. <laughs> I might have myself frozen when I die, and she thinks this is weird because she's real old-fashioned. She wants to be canned, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> she's a total contrast to my other grandmother, who is, like, the coolest, you know? She's getting real old, my mom's mom, real forgetful, bordering on senile. A bright spot, because she always let me meet new people, and her and I hit it off every time. 
As forgetful as she's getting, just much more tolerant than either of my parents. We're sitting around the other day, me, her, and my mom. My grandma asked me a typical grandma question, you know. So you got any girlfriends? And I, I told her, you know, I was embarrassed. So I told her I'd been bunking this one, babe, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> my mom spins out, gasps, and goes, Matthew! And my grandma says, wake up, it's 1972. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I appreciate you listening.